my videos are gonna work. There we go, boys and girls. So, welcome to today's lesson. Today's lesson is how to do a cranial nerve exam. How many of you boys and girls out there know where a cranial nerve comes from? <laughs> where do cranial nerves come from? They come from the cranium. So you have to make sure that you get that these nerves are all coming out of the cranial vault and running to other places. How many cranial nerves are there? 12. And what's the first cranial nerve? Olfactory. olfactory nerve. So olfactory nerve is responsible for your sense of smell. So if I was going to take our patient through her sense of smell, the first thing is you would, that you would do is face the patient and say, I'd like to check your sense of smell. What we're going to do is have you cover one nostril and then you're going to close your eyes. But before you do that, you're going to smell this. And we're going to pretend that this is some coffee or some mint or something like that. All you need to do for your exam purposes is just mime it. Have the stuff ready. Okay. Yeah, but I don't want her to breathe a toxic. Even though it's low odor, I don't want her to breathe a toxic marker. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and close your eyes. And then go ahead and just put your hand over one nostril so it's closed. And take a nice big inhale. And what does that smell like? Cinnamon. Yes, cinnamon. cinnamon. Yeah. Yes, cinnamon. All right, fantastic. <laughs> and can we repeat on the opposite side? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And another big breath in. And how does that smell like? Mint. Mint. Fantastic. So that would be olfactory nerve. Next nerve is? Optic. optic nerve. And the optic nerve is going to be your visual acuity. So if you wanted to, you could take the back of your orthopedic assessment book, which has a Snell and eye chart, or you can use the posture charts that have an eye chart, or you could mime it and say, can you go ahead and read the first line on this right here? Yes. What is the second line? A, E, I... Z45, right? Absolutely. So you're just having them look for that 2020 vision or somewhere around there for the scale of it. The next part for the cranial nerve number two is peripheral fields. Okay, so peripheral fields here. This is a little bit tricky and I kind of leave it up to you guys to decide how you want to do it. But at the end of the day, I need to see that her eyes are looking forward and not shifting in position and that she can see into peripheral fields. So just as an example, I'm going to have you go ahead and she's going to look at my tie. So we'll turn your body just this way just a little bit. You're going to look at the button on my tie. I'm going to bring my hands in, and I want you to let me know when you can see my fingertips. Probably on the lower hand yeah. you can see them. Can you see them on the upper hand? Yeah. And which one's moving? Both. Both are moving. Okay. And you're going to go ahead and repeat. Okay. I know. That's, that's the tricky part of it. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing. Yep. Bottom. Top. And which one's moving? The bottom. Just the bottom one. Okay. So you're asking those in different directions. You're trying to trick the patient to make sure that they're giving you actual honest answers. So sometimes you wiggle them both. Sometimes you don't. The next thing you can do for the optic nerve is... You can do an optic nerve exam if you wanted to. So you can pull out your ophthalmoscope. Okay, so your ophthalmoscope. So now this is my ophthalmoscope. We're going to have you go ahead and look at the projector right there. Mm -hmm. And you're just going to follow in. Red reflex coming to the back of the eye, looking for the macula and all the vasculature that runs through there. And then slowly bringing yourself back up. So that's going to be optic nerve. Then we get to the oculomotor nerve. And what is that responsible for? I'm, I'm seeing half the, half the class is doing this right now. Eye movement, but what do you do with it? If you're doing cranial nerve three, you should also be doing four and six at the same time. Okay, so you're doing the H pattern of movement. So keeping your head still, what I'd like you to do is follow my fingertip or follow the tip of this pen, and we're going to go all the way out to the side like this, bring them up, and then all the way down. So you're checking all the muscles of the eye and cranial nerves three, four, and six when you do this. And it's very important that you take them all the way to end range. Now, a couple of other things that you want to do with this is you don't want to do it like this. Please follow this pen. Okay? <laughs> the next thing you don't want to do is I see students do this all the time. Please follow this pen, and this is how they challenge. Okay? I want to take her eyes all the way to the outside, get them so they're just working, and then move up and down here. And you're looking for things like abnormal tracking or one eye doesn't follow the same as the other one or nystagmus potentially. Questions on any of that? Cranial nerves 1, 2, 3, 5, I'm sorry, 6, Four and six. Yep. Optic, peripheral field. Optic nerve is peripheral fields and visual acuity. And then you can do the eye exam as well with your ophthalmoscope if it's within your scope of practice to do it, which it absolutely is. Okay. All right. And then we miss cranial nerve. Cranial nerve five, staying alive. What's the name of cranial nerve five? Trigeminal nerve. What's the trigeminal nerve supply? Okay. Okay. Muscles of mastication, and it supplies over top of the sensation over top of the face, okay? So, how do we check that? The first thing is, if you're checking the motor response, and you do have to do both parts of this, I'm gonna go ahead and palpate your master and temporalis, and what I want you to do is bite down when I do that. So right here, I can feel a temporalis, go ahead and relax, and bite down again. Yep, perfect, and you can feel both of those muscles contracting at the same time. 
If you wanted to, I've seen other people do it where they try and take the jaw and deviate it from side to side. Meh, not such a big fan of that. I've seen people take a tongue depressor, put it in their mouth and say, bite it, and then can you hold on to it? So it's like a dog, like, <laughs> like one of these things, okay? But you don't necessarily have to do that one either, okay? Next is going to be the sensory branches. And what are the three sensory branches of the trigeminal nerve? B1, B2, B3, which are also known as? Ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular branches, okay? And for this, I'm going to lightly brush the skin of your face. I want you to tell me if it feels the same or different on each side, okay? So, closing your eyes, and then same or different? Same. Same? Different. Different? Same. Same? Same. And that's your quick scan through the trigeminal nerve. Now, the other thing... Students have done this before. You think you can be slick. I had somebody do this the other semester, and they were like, okay, I'm going to check the uh, cranial nerve uh, 5 for the facial innervation. Can you close your eyes? <laughs> okay, one of those right there. If you do that full brush, technically you did get all of those, but what did you actually do? Okay? You stimulated all those areas, and may, may not be the most professional way for you to do it. So please, please watch that one. So three, four, five, six. Now we're up to 7. Cranial nerve 7 is... Facial nerve, muscles of facial expression. Realistically, you've probably already done this when the person first has walked into your office because you'll see them smile and whatever their facial expressions are, but just to make it more clinically applicable, let's go ahead and follow the actions that I do. Can you go ahead and frown down a little bit? Like really down, Ugh, like this. Can you puff up your cheeks? And can you smile really big? But like really big, okay? Yeah, like one of those, okay? I always like to finish with a smile because you kind of get them up and bright like this, and it's just a way to look for elevation. What does a lesion of the cranial nerve seven look like? The face might droop on one side, usually going to be secondary to a stroke. If you guys go back to the muscle manual or orthopedic assessments manual, you can see we have the table which gives, you, which gives you all the lesions and where they would be, so you can refer back to that. Seven, who do we appreciate? Cranial nerve number? Eight. eight. <laughs> okay. All right. Who do we appreciate? Cranial nerve number eight. All right. Cranial nerve number eight. What is the name of that nerve again? Vestibulocochlear. The name tells me what it does. Vestibular, kind of semicircular canals and balance. Cochlear is? Hearing. So we're going to have our patient sitting like this. I'm going to be making a sound with my fingertips. And I want you to tell me when you can't hear that sound anymore. And all I'm going to do is stand behind fingers like this and slowly bring them out to the side and tell me when you can't hear it anymore. Okay, all right, that would be good for a baseline check. You can go ahead and do it. There's other ways to do it where you whisper in the patient's ear, but I always find it a little bit awkward when I whisper in the patient's ear. Okay, if you look at older books, there is a ticking watch test that you can use. So if you have a watch that has a second hand on it, it goes tick, 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 which doesn't exist anymore, basically, so don't even bother with that one. All right, that gets you through half of it. What's the other half? Cochlear is balanced. So you want to be very clear on this one right here because I believe that the... Pete Proctor's doing the exam might have some balance issues and you might have to catch them, okay? <laughs> Nothing goes worse on a practical exam than when you drop your patient, all right? <laughs> okay, don't drop your patient. So the first thing is, you're gonna describe to the patient what you'd like them to do. So I want you to go ahead and walk heel to toe, heel to toe like this. And you're gonna go ahead, if you'd like, you can put one hand on this, on this bench if you feel like you're gonna fall at all. So let's go ahead and have you do that. All right, and so she's gonna walk. And what am I ready? <laughs> I'm ready to catch him, and she's got good balance, and she's walking back and forth right there. So you're ready to catch your patient if they're going to fall. When is the best time to catch them? Before they fall. Right as they start to teeter a little bit, offer a hand first, and then get them, okay? I don't want to give this away, uh, but there's a couple of things right there. Number one, why is it important that I demonstrate the heel-to-toe walk? So it goes like this, heel-to-toe, okay? And then the next one goes heel-to-toe, heel-to-toe, back and forth. People misinterpret it. I've had, I can remember this one. If you're watching this one, Alex, you know what I'm talking about. This is from you. What does she do? What is heel to toe? This is heel to toe. Okay, so she walks like that when really it's your heel, your heel hits your toe, okay? Just like on Saturday night when you got pulled over by the police. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. All right, and then it gets into more balance beyond that, but that's the starting position right there, okay? Vestibulocochlear. The next one is going to be cranial nerve number nine, which is? Glossopharyngeal. All right. This one, I usually do not have students check on me during the practical exams because I don't want to gag and throw up a whole bunch of times, okay? But the bottom line, what do you do is you'd have the patient open their mouth, you take a cotton swab or a Q-tip or something like this, and you touch the back of the throat and you look for them to go, okay? And that is the test right there. Next one is going to be cranial nerve number 10, which is the vagus nerve. And how do we check the vagus nerve? Okay, you have them say ah, you'll look back in the mouth, I'm going to have you say ah, 
and I'm looking, and actually, so what you can see right here is just basic biomechanics. If I do this, I'm trying to meet the patient, but I want to make it easier for me because I'm going to have to do lots of exams in a day. I'll have them tilt their head back a little bit and do the same thing. Uh, so she says, ah, uh, and I can see her uvula goes up in the midline. What's another finding associated with vagus nerve injury? Hoarseness of voice, okay? I'm Batman. If they come in as Batman, then you know they might have a problem, all right? There's way more differentials on this, but it's part of a baseline introductory to cranial nerve exam. That's a key part of it right there. And if both of your vagus nerves are damaged, what happens? You're dead. You're dead, okay? You die with bilateral vagus nerve lesions. All right, so then it goes that. Then we got cranial nerve 11. What's cranial nerve 11? Spinal accessory nerve. And what do I do for spinal accessory? I think of two muscles. And what are those two muscles? Trapezius and SCM. So if you're going to check SCM, the easiest way that I know how to do it, stabilize the patient's back, push over top of the forehead right here, and go ahead and resist that action, and go ahead and relax. And you can see right away both of her SCMs jumped out as she did that. Next thing for trapezius, this is a pet peeve of mine. I see people when they first do it. Can I have you lift both of your shoulders up for us? And they try and muscle test from way out here, okay? <laughs> I think, I think I got about 10 pounds of force right there, all right? What am I going to encourage you strongly to do? Get it? Pun intended, strongly. <laughs> you guys don't get it. It's okay. All right? <laughs> all right. So shoulders all the way up, and I'm going to hang from them. I get my bunny foo-foo hands out like this, and I'm going to hang. So hold that position. Hold it, hold it, hold it, and you get heavy, and you pull to see good strength, all right? If you test muscles lightly, which you might miss or more more specific muscle injuries. By just testing like this, if I just go ahead and hold right here and push like that, yeah, technically she's contracting her SCMs, but what percent contraction? Minimal. Like minimal, like 10%, right? So I missed 90% of the muscle fibers right there. I probably didn't do a very good check. I would slowly build up to that pressure and slowly take it away. And then the last one that you finish off with, last cranial nerve? Hypoglossal. hypoglossal. Okay, and what do we do for hypoglossal? Just stick your tongue out. Can I just stick your tongue out? And if she sticks it out straight, that is a normal tongue right there. If the tongue comes out and deviates to the one side or another, it can indicate a lesion. There are other exams that you can do as well, like an otoscopic exam, an ear, a, a nose exam, and all of that. But those are all more specific for eye, ear, nose, and throat exams. For basic cranial nerves, that's all I really need to see from you guys for right now. There's a corneal reflex you can do. Again, for practical testing purposes, I don't need people taking a cotton swab, brushing my eye, and seeing that my eye blinks. Okay? All right. Questions on any of that? Yep. When you were testing the uh, Kelly Jenny and the other one, you were moving from two to B3. And then I noticed that with the B2 and this one, was it the same or different? She's yep. different. And is that. Um, Yep, so the testing on the B1, B2, B3, it's your option to do it. What you don't want to do when you're testing patients is you want to make sure they're giving factual answers. And factual answers means I have to mix it up a little bit. So you can go ahead and say, does this feel the same? I could have done it like this. Does that feel the same? And then I could have skipped one down here, or I could have skipped one at the top. But either way, you want to check that their nervous system is paying attention. They're going to give you actual real findings and not just what they think they should be giving you. Especially important if you're dealing with legal cases or like ICBC issues and things like that. Yep. So the question is, if somebody has nystagmus, if somebody has nystagmus, where's the problem coming from? There's a big differential for where nystagmus comes, is coming from. Yep, for right now, it could be cranial nerve 8, it could be cranial nerve 3, it could be like lateral rectus, or so LR, cranial nerve 6. There's lots of potential causes for nystagmus. It could be a vascular surprise problem to the brain and the head. So for right now, I care that you guys recognize what nystagmus is, but the actual cause, that's a huge differential for later on for you guys to get. Could we injury okay. to the inner ear? Like injury to the inner ear can absolutely cause nystagmus to occur. Some people can actually induce artificial nystagmus where they can take their eyes and just wiggle them back and forth. Okay? It's like taking your hand and being able to, you know, that kind of a shake, but they can do it with their eyes. Okay? All right, other questions? Five and six and seven. All right, if you're reviewing this video, thank you very much for your time, and hopefully we'll see you again in the future.